Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever noticed how TV commercials often emphasize trouble, difficulty that we face in our lives? Your car won't start, you have a, a nagging backache, hacking cough, you can't sleep. Life certainly has its problems, many problems. We struggle with financial trouble. We have perplexing, persistent personal problems. Our fears, our failures, our frustrations. We struggle with the stress and the strain, the trials and the troubles of everyday life. But we must hang on to hope. The prophet Jeremiah lived in a very difficult time in the history of God's chosen people of Israel in the Old Testament. Jeremiah is often referred to as the weeping prophet, and there certainly was plenty for him and for many others in, in Judah and in the southern kingdom of Israel to weep about. In fact, that was an age that was very similar to our own. Many people, even, even many of God's chosen people, the Israelites, had forsaken the true God, and they were chasing after pagan gods. The international situation also was very tense and troubled with, with war and impending war on the horizon. But God called Jeremiah to speak out against the evils of his day. One biblical scholar described Jeremiah by saying, Like walls of brass, he stood firm against frenzied prophets, fanatic priests, frantic people, and furious kings. And from every battle, he rose more than a conqueror by the grace and power of him who is the Lord, his strength, his fortress, and his refuge in the day of affliction, because the Lord was Jehovah, his righteousness. Our world is in trouble. People have forsaken the true God of the Bible, and they chase after many different false gods, whether it's false religions that some people turn to, or whether it's secular humanism that people turn to instead of worshiping the true God of the Bible. Some people worship the, the God of science, which rejects the true God and his creation of the world. Others kneel at the altar of money and possessions and entertainment. You and I so easily turn our backs on God in favor of, of something else which might not be bad in and of itself, but it becomes an idol when we put it in the place of highest priority in our lives. We get our priorities all mixed up. For example, the, the young person says, I want to be popular with my friends. I want to fit in and be accepted. And so they end up sacrificing their moral standards just in order to fit in or be popular. Or the working person might say, in order to be a success in my job or in my company, I might have to, to, to give up on some of my moral standards in a certain situation. And many people run away. Run away from the troubles of this life. Look, look for anything that, that can help them to, to dull the pain or give some distraction for a period of time. For some people, it's alcohol. For others, it's drugs. For some, it's, it's sex. For others, it's just constant partying and entertainment, anything to, to fill the longing that only God can fill in our hearts. Anything to, to escape the nagging troubles and difficulties that they face in life. The consequences of sin were very prevalent in Jeremiah's day, just as they are prevalent in our day as well. The consequence of sin leads to, to a feeling of emptiness, of doubt, of despair in our hearts. And eventually, the consequence of sin leads to death, to eternal death in hell. The Bible says, St. Paul in, in, in the book of Romans, that the wages of sin is death. And so this reading from the prophet Jeremiah that we have before us today is a true message of hope from God to his people who were, who were faced with impending disaster and destruction, God speaks to them a message of hope, a, a promise that he will restore them. 
And certainly we see that being fulfilled when God, after, after years, decades of, of Judah's captivity in Babylon, God allowed them to come back to their homeland, to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem and to rebuild the city. But also, these verses also speak of a, of a true and eternal hope that's not just for this lifetime, not just for this earth, but a hope for a perfect future with God in heaven. And so that's also in view when God speaks these words of hope and comfort to his people. So let's, let's think about that long view as we hear those verses again. Sing with joy for Jacob and shout for the greatest of the nations. Make your praises heard and say, Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Watch, I will bring them from a land in the north and gather them from the ends of the earth. The blind and the lame will be there, the pregnant woman together with the woman in labor. They will return as a huge community. They will come weeping, tears of joy. They will pray as I bring them back. I will lead them beside streams of water on a level path where they will not stumble. For I am a father to Israel. Ephraim is my firstborn. In this text, we see that God's prophet proclaims truly good news to God's people. This good news, this gospel, in fact, is for all the people of the whole world. It says they will return a huge community, and God will gather them from the ends of the earth. That's not just from the nation of Israel. That's from every nation on the earth. This gospel brings hope to all the people of the world. And God wants us to hang on to that hope. Because our only true hope in life and for eternal life is this good news of God's mercy and his rescue. God loves us, and in order to prove his love, God gave his own son, Jesus. Jesus, who, who was the eternal, all-powerful, all-knowing God, became a human being just like us for our salvation. He submitted himself to the, to the cruelty and the mockery of sinful people all the way to the cross. He was bloodied and broken on the cross so that we might have the blessings of his love, the eternal salvation that God wants to give us. Jesus was stripped naked on the cross in order that we might be dressed with a royal robe of his righteousness in the sight of God. Jesus was whipped and lacerated on the cross so that we might be liberated, set free from all of our sins. Those caring hands of Jesus that tenderly touched the little children and healed the sick and the blind and the lame, those hands were brutally nailed to the cross. That tongue that Jesus had used to, to speak words of blessing and of God's love and mercy to his people was parched and dried up with thirst as he hung there for hours. The Apostle Paul says about Jesus in Galatians chapter 2, He loved me and gave himself for me. Yes, Jesus Christ came to rescue us from the ruin of our sins and to save us from all of our sins and the eternal death and destruction that they would have brought upon us. His blood has paid the full price, the penalty that was rightfully ours because of our sins. Our sins and the price and the penalty that had to be paid for them carried Jesus to death and to, to burial in the tomb. But then he walked out of, that out of that tomb as the triumphant and living Lord and Savior. And so through faith in Jesus, who died and rose again in your place so that, so that we might have the gift of his righteousness, the forgiveness of every one of our sins, the assurance of heaven and the hope of God's comfort and his abiding presence with us and blessing as we face all the troubles and difficulties of this life. Our confidence, our hope is built upon Jesus, the eternal rock, the solid foundation for our lives. The cross and the empty tomb of Jesus guarantee all the forgiveness of our sins and our hope of eternal life with God in heaven that is sure and certain and unshakable. It 
It's that hope that we hang on to by God's grace. Is life a drudgery for you sometimes? Do you carry a cross, a, a heavy burden in your life? Many of us have, have come here today hurting, whether for some that, that might be a physical illness or, or a disability or some chronic pain. For others, it might be the, the lingering sadness and grief of having lost a loved one. Students worry about exams and, and about their complexion and appearance. Young people worry about their job and their future. Middle-aged people might worry about getting their kids through college. Retirees might worry about how they can afford to live on a fixed income when, when prices continue to rise. We worry about cancer and heart disease and other problems. Here is the hope of the gospel that God gives us. Christ himself comes to us in the midst of, of all our daily tasks and our drudgery and tedium and trouble to bless us with his love. What kind of a week did you have this past week? For some of us, maybe it was a, a great week, time spent with family and friends. Maybe you got a promotion. Maybe you had a, a date with your significant other. But perhaps for others of us, it, it was not such a great week. Maybe you struggled with a cough or a cold. Maybe you had a significant setback at work. Maybe there's a feeling of guilt that is gripping your heart. Maybe there's a, a feeling of, of some kind of failure that is frustrating you in your life. Maybe you're filled with fear or worry or doubt. If any of those things are, are troubling you, hang on to the hope that God gives you through Jesus. Yes, Jesus might not take away all of the problems in your life right now. Those things don't always disappear like magic just because we follow our Savior. But Jesus does give us the power and the grace to cope with the problems of our life. He gives us strength and support and stability. He gives us the power to, to carry our cross, to carry whatever burdens we might have in life. As the hymn writer so, so aptly put it in the hymn that we'll sing at the close of our service today, we can bring all of, all of our troubles, all of our concerns and worries to Jesus in prayer and trust that he hears and answers our prayers for our good. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything. Yes, everything we can carry to our God in prayer. Amen.